Today I want to introduce you to Trinka.ai and so this is a grammar and spell checker similar to Grammarly but one of the things it does is it actually allows you to find similar literature of the current research article you are reading. So that's what I'm going to show you today. So this is their website and if you want to just get their free extension all you have to do is go to apps and go to their browser plugin. This is a free Chrome extension, so then you can just say install the Chrome extension. And I already have it installed, but you would just hit it right here to install it, and then it would get installed into your Chrome browser. So once you've done that, you can go to any research article that you are interested in. And if you're struggling with finding those research articles, knowing which ones to read and things like that, you can check out my 30-day research jumpstart guide. It'll be a link in the description below as well. But today, since I do a lot of different tools, I test it on this paper, which is my first published paper. I am going to test this one on it as well. So once you have the extension installed, you can see I can come up to my extensions up here. And if I scroll down, there is Trinka AI for Chrome. And what it'll do is right down here, you get this Trinka symbol. And what it'll have is this little magnifying glass that says get similar literature. So this will work on things like Google Scholar, which I'll show you in a minute, but it will also work on just any online PDF that's open in your browser. And so what I can do is I can click get similar literature and what it'll do is it will start fetching this similar literature. So this is like a way of doing what Research Rabbit does for collections on a single paper that you're interested in reading. I'll have videos on Research Rabbit linked below if you're interested in that at all. But this starts allowing you look for very similar literature. And this is typically going to be citations and references as well. And so you can see the first one it pulls up is actually a future paper. So this one was published, it's my paper. So this one was published after this paper and it is the most relevant. Like this is exactly what followed this paper. So I think if you didn't know that I had the second paper out there and you were reading this one, using Trinka to automatically find kind of what's the next one in the series is actually really awesome versus having to like go look at kind of a little bit more complicated like connected papers or research rabbit when you're really looking for a single paper. And you can have, it also includes an excerpt right here, which is really interesting for you to kind of understand what's going on. There's also a paper on calibrant selection. This came from my same lab and was cited in this paper. And then this is another one cited in this paper. So this is the separation of steroid structural isomers. Again, very highly relevant. A review that includes this paper. So that is my review. It includes this paper and I think all three of these above it as well. And then this one's not as relevant. It's still about eye mobility. I think it is cited in this paper, but it's not as relevant to specifically steroids and eye mobility. And you can see as we're going down, we're kind of getting further away in relevance. But being able to quickly see these first few here that are really highly relevant, I think is a really cool ability that you typically don't, you know, have if you're just reading a PDF. You don't get this bubble saying, hey, these are the most relevant other papers. You can also see survey papers here. These are things that I don't think I'm as interested in. And then you can get review articles. So if you were looking for review articles on different aspects of what's in this paper, you can look here. I'm surprised that the review that they pulled in the other one, the steroids and I, uh, steroids analysis biomobility, I'm surprised that that's not the one that comes up first. In fact, I, I like it doesn't even come up anywhere near first. And that might be because this is mainly pulling the references of this paper, not how this paper's been cited. So this is like, I think it'd be helpful if you're interested in a review on a specific topic, but I don't think it's overall the most helpful thing. You can look at cited by, so you can quickly get what papers have cited this paper. So if you're trying to see that, again, this paper comes up next, which is the next in the series. And then you can see Wikipedia analyses of kind of, if you were wondering what eye mobility is, you can just go over to that. There are lectures that are included on it. And then finally, you can see light reads. None of these are super relevant. So I think the most relevant thing to most of you guys is going to be just the research papers and maybe the reviews as well. 
And so I want to show you one other thing by going to Google Scholar. So this is just me searching steroids and eye mobility. And what you can see here is down on the bottom left here, we have Trinka again, and you can do this get similar literature as well. So this is doing again that same thing, but what you can do is it recognizes that each of these are different. So what you can do is you can actually search for the one that you actually want the literature on. So this is a review and you can see it's giving, if I click on this, it's giving me really similar papers to the ones that are included in this review. And then it kind of goes into eye mobility here steroid and eye mobility. So these are really on the same topic as this that might not show up here. And what if we go to like this one? So this one's specifically a research paper. So I'm a little interested what it pulls up. So that's interesting because it's pulling up the exact same paper. Yeah, this is the same paper. It just has un in front of it. So that's a little interesting, large scale CCS profiling on that. So that is really similar. It's just not specific to steroids. So some of these may not even appear in this search because they're pulling out different themes of that paper and their relevance. So this could be really helpful if you find a paper on Google Scholar and want to quickly see are there others in that theme that might not be related to the keywords you're actually searching for on Google Scholar. It's and then if you're interested in any of these papers, all you have to do is click on it and it links you to its site. So you can go and be able to get the PDF or anything like that directly from its site as well. So one other thing that you can do on Google Scholar is actually click this select text to explore. And so if you click it, it will allow you to specifically choose any text that you want to find a similar literature about. So maybe I'm interested in this, but I'm specifically interested in this little excerpt here. The standalone IMS analysis will examine the use of derivatization of steroids. So maybe I'm specifically interested in are there other things that did derivatization of steroids or IMS analysis of that? And so what you can see is we got a review that came up here. We got differential mobility spectrometry for rapid separation detection. And then we got a chemical de derivatization technique for, it's not specifically IMS, but it's another LC-MS-MS analysis using chemical derivatization. And then we can see a few others. We're seeing some of the other ones we've been seeing come in here. But, and here's another derivatization efficiency for anti-doping, which is related to steroids. So you can see that because of searching specific text, you can find related papers that you wouldn't necessarily find just by searching what is related to that specific paper. If you are interested in an entire software that will help you find a lot of related papers, I would check out my tutorial on ResearchRabbit, and I will have another tutorial over here talking about using ResearchRabbit for literature reviews. If you found this helpful, please like it and subscribe to this channel for more videos on how to become more efficient in your research. I hope this video was helpful, and I look forward to seeing you in the next one.